Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy, <clears throat> Regenerative Rancher Channel. For those of y'all that are just uh, new to the channel, welcome. If you like what you see today, hit that subscribe button when you check out and appreciate it. Uh, today's agenda I'm going to be talking about is leasing land. I'm getting a lot of emails from people that <clears throat> I have a lot of questions about how you approach the lease, how to find the land, uh, how to work with the landowner, how to develop it. What do you do if there's no electricity? What do you do with no fence? You know, the list just goes on and on. And so I'm going to cover some of that today. And, uh, you know, a little bit of history of us. Uh, we live here in central Missouri. And um, I don't know how many years ago it's been now. It was like, well, it was 1999. I got my first land lease. And today, uh, this is 2020. That's 21 years later. Uh, we've got 16 different farms now. Uh, four of those we now own. But we started out leasing, okay, um, after I almost went bankrupt trying to buy land. I just couldn't do it. You couldn't make the payments on it with what you can raise on it. Folks, today, land is not priced for what it'll produce, okay? It's priced for what you can sell it for when you put a house on it as a building site, or maybe for a hunting paradise or something, but it's not priced for what it can produce. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. The, the leasing the land, our, our success has been trying to find land around areas where there's there's not a lot of population center you know if you get real close up to a town <clears throat> you're you're going to have more uh, issues finding that land and that's because there's going to be more people wanting that land i don't really want to uh, set up a livestock operation where i've got houses on my back fence line you got a lot of yards and a lot of dogs you've got you know young kids out there uh, and you've got animals right up against their backyard I don't, I don't want any part of that. So I'm going to get out in the country, okay? And with that, uh, you have a little bit more seclusion. But when you go to lease land, first of all, when you meet with the landowner, um, I think you have to be, there are several steps that I recommend. And one is, when you first meet them, you're not asking them about leasing the land. You're asking them about just who they are, at a, you know, greedy, a meet and greet, you know, where you live in relation to where they live, just say hi, you know. And then over maybe the next week or a couple of weeks or whatever, you maybe stop back by and say, you know, you, you notice they've got some land out, land out here. And then tell them a little bit about what you're doing. And if you're doing, and basically describing what I do in some of my videos, if you can, uh, send a link to them. You know, the ones, it's got the pretty green grass and the healthy looking cattle. And, you know, you're, you're managing in sync with nature. People like that message. It's getting stronger every day. And that's because people are starting to wake up. We can't treat land like we're treating it and have it not pay us back in spades. And that's what's happening. We've got to treat the land better. We've got to treat it with respect. It's not just soil. And so we like to call ourselves land beautification specialists. That's what we do. We go into land, idle land that looks kind of tough, and we can beautify it with our management, with our livestock, and our grazing expertise. And uh, so that's been our success. Uh, I, I did write a book. Uh, this one is called No Risk Ranching. And on this one, uh, it's custom grazing on leased land. And with this book, I covered, you know, uh, how I write the leases, okay, and that's huge. You've got to write the leases correctly. They got to be structured right. Uh, I would highly recommend recommend not doing a handshake lease, okay. If you do a handshake lease, uh, that's not a real durable lease. You know, you can come back in a year and say, "Well, he said, you said, I said, no." You need a written lease. So when you first meet the landowner, you're not talking about writing a lease or anything. What you're trying to do is get him to read something or maybe watch a video. This is your second or third visit after you know him by his first name. Hopefully you know his wife and his kids. Um, maybe on the second visit, don't still don't say anything about the leasing. Leave him a package of grass-fed hamburger or a ribeye or something. Or If you don't have anything going on your own and somebody else does... At, and he's a good friend of yours, maybe get some of his meat, or ask him if you can bring that person to their farm, just for a look-see along the road to show them what it could look like. Folks, that's our advantage now, is we've got enough farms developed 
that we put up some pretty nice looking fence. Okay, and that's why I'm really excited about the timeless fence post. My God, I don't have to paint them anymore. I don't have to grill them. We put them up. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Okay. Well, what's so beautiful about beautiful? Well, when you're in the land leasing business, beautiful is everything. You're dealing a lot of with people that don't have any connection to the land. They bought it for an investment, but they know beautiful. They know what sharp is. And it's your job, if you are fortunate enough to get on a piece of ground, whether it's five acres or 500, you make it look better. And you need to work on that ground. You need to work on it. Well, I did. I'm, I was goofy. I worked on it day and night. You know, you've heard some of my stories earlier. I had a coon light. Went on my head after I got off work, working in town. I go home and I put on the coon light. I mean... I love taking old farms and turning them around. And folks, once you get the land leased, we're going to talk about that later, certain steps of developing it, but you've got to get on it first. And I think a lot of people scare off landowners. Oh, I want to run cattle. Or I want to run, I want to run livestock on your land. You don't do that. That's a turnoff right from the start. You get to know the person. Get to know the person. Develop a little bit of relationship with them. And then maybe you leave them something to read, okay? And maybe not a book, maybe just a pamphlet, okay? Um, email them a, a link to one of the most beautiful grazing videos you can find, where you've got the, the beautiful green grass, beautiful slick hided red or black cattle. I don't care which they are. They need to be slick hided though. And the cattle need to be happy and healthy and kicking their legs up and happy, no mud. Absolutely no mud on the animals. And when you meet the landowner, I got there better not be any mud on you either. You want no mud, uh, clean shaven if you can. If you got a beard, trim it up, mustache, trim it up. And your vehicle, when you get that landowner, if you're fortunate enough to get him in your truck or your car to take him down the road to maybe one of your farms, I got have it clean. Armor all it. Get the inside of that vehicle clean. Vacuum out the dust. Clean the floor mats. Armor on them. You need to come off of somebody that's got your stuff together. Not a hillbilly hick that's got mud manure all over the floorboard. and There's stuff thrown in the back seat and you got to move the stuff away from the seat to get him a place to sit down. No. No. You've got to come off as a professional. And if you don't come off as a professional, how in the world... Do you expect that stranger to think anything of you of being your act together? He doesn't. He's going to look at your vehicle if it's all dirty and nasty. He's like, you know what? This guy doesn't know how to take care of stuff. This is probably what my farm's going to look like. So if you don't get that lease on that first one, go back, revisit what you did, write down the steps you did, and, and see what went wrong. Maybe it was the landlord, but there may be some items in there that you did wrong. Folks, if you can get somebody in your vehicle and bring them out to your farm after they know you and just do a paddock move where you're moving the animals to the next paddock, it is a phenomenal thing, okay? To see healthy animals charging through a gate, put their head down, start ripping off green grass, and you're not using any fossil fuel, basically. You're using the sunlight to grow the grass. You're growing healthy meat, healthy soil, catching rainwater right where it falls, You've got good groundwater coming off your farm because everything's healthy, okay? You're a microbe farmer. You've got to speak that language. Folks get excited. I'm talking these folks are landowners. They're the ones that own the land. You're trying to get on their land. They don't know how to graze livestock. They absolutely do not. They don't know how to build fence. They don't know how to develop water. That's all you. You know how to do that. You will learn to do that. And if you will, folks, there is a great opportunity out here. And that's because you can get on land without buying it. So you're not tying up all your capital. How do you think we fenced all these farms? I couldn't have fenced all these farms without making a land payment every month or two months or twice a year. I couldn't have done it. But we were able to take money. See, we, we did custom grazing starting out. So we got paid to graze other people's livestock. That's a whole nother talk. I'm going to give that. How, we, how you go about doing that. So it, it provides instant cash flow. 
the very minute you get your farm fence on a lease farm, you get some water on it, by God, you can bring animals on it. You don't need to buy them. Let somebody else do that. So we didn't own the land. We didn't own the animals. We were a management service. Today, we own everything on the animals, not all the land. We've got four of them. We've got four farms. And, you know, some of our landowners, there may be an opportunity down the road. They want to sell it. They get older and they need the money for retirement or whatever. Maybe we're in a position to do that. But at the start, I'm not saying land ownership is bad. It's not. I'd a lot rather own land than own stocks, especially in today's market with this virus. I mean, you saw what happened in the stock market. The land is still here. And no matter what happens to the stock market, you still have your land. You can grow food on it. You can walk on it. You can cut fuel from it. You can build a home on it. It's yours. And as long as you make the payment on it, nobody can take it away from you. So it's not a bad investment. All I'm saying is don't go out here and blow your whole nest egg on the land and not have any money left to do anything else with it. In other words, you don't have any money now to buy livestock. You don't have any money to build a fence, to develop the water. Maybe you need a pond in there or whatever. You don't have any money left because you spend it all on the land purchase. Don't do that starting now. Lease it. There's land out there, folks. You don't think I'm the only one in the United States that is leasing land? No. No. There's a lot of people out doing it now. A lot of it's been a result of this. People read that book. And they'd given up on farming. Like, you know, there's just no way. There's just no way. Not in today's economic environment. There's no way. But now... They'd never thought about leasing it. Folks, there's people that have doing this full time now. You could be one of those people. Absolutely could. So go to our website, uh, greenpasturesfarm.net. Uh, you can get these from there. And I uh, <laughs> always give this plug. You get an autographed copy. How cool is that? So, yeah, um, for those of you all new, thank you uh, for finding the channel. I don't know how you found it, but I'm glad you found it. And maybe you'll come back, hit that like button on the way out. And uh, we'll see you down the road in my next talk. I'm going to be talking. It may not be the very next one, but I'm going to give one on how to get the animals on the land without buying them. How's that? Everyone have a great day. And keep your chins up, folks. We're going to get through this virus thing. Uh, you know, you keep, if, you, if you keep your eyes latched on that TV all the time, it will depress you. Get out on the land. Get out on the land. Take a walk. Take your dog with you. Go out and visit your animals. Take a five-gallon bucket if they're set in the middle of your cows or your sheep and watch them eat. It's getting spring. Things are getting exciting out here. Maybe clean out a fence row. Get some of that brush remover. You can get some new wire in there to get your new paddock put in. Work on your water. Folks, it's a great life, and we only get one day at a time. Live it to your fullest, okay? We'll see you all down the road. Thank you all.